What's up, Matt from Merchfab here. So finally getting somewhere with the uh, issues with this thing now. So I've had loads of recommendations, um, had loads of people reach out, give me advice on all sorts of stuff, jetting, different people I should take it to. Uh, There's a few names that came up repeatedly and I got chatting with Neil Slark, who was one of the, the people that had been recommended multiple times. He's been tuning these for many, many years and is sort of a specialist in carbureted racing minis, tunes a lot of the minis that actually uh, race in the, in the series. So ended up taking the car up to him. He stuck it on his rollers, did a bit of an experimenting with some jetting, managed to tune out that really rich bit at the bottom, which you can see here. Uh, but didn't really make any difference to the top and the very sort of peaky power that it was making and as you can see it sort of had this power band that would ramp up really quickly and then just tail off and then sort of fall off a cliff at the end at about 7000 rpm so managed to managed to sort out the, that bottom area a little bit and then um, did an experiment of uh, basically removing the trumpets and replacing them with sort of like a radius boss that just bolted directly to the carb. So you pretty much had no, no trumpet length on the carb whatsoever. We had to take them on because couldn't actually get them to fit on there properly. So they weren't, you know, it wasn't an ideal setup by any means. And it actually brought the power um, up to more of, a, more of the curve that you would want. Um, so at that point, Neil said he thought the issue was definitely the inlet manifold. The decision was made that I would just leave the car with him and he was going to borrow a, a few different manifolds, test them out and just see which one uh, ended up working out the best. The one I had on there originally was a five and a half inch aluminium manifold. He tested, a, I think, a four and a half, three and a half and a two and a half and ended up with the three and a half inch manifold being the one that made the best power and the best power curve. Interestingly, the, when he went all the way down to the two and a half, the car went really lean and he had to jet it back up to um, compensate for that. So obviously it was running really rich with my manifold on there. And the sweet spot was the three and a half inch one and if you look at pretty much every other example of the uh, Miglia cars that run these engines, they all seem to run the three and a half inch manifold. So with the three and a half inch manifold on there, it sounded different straight away. Revving it from um, low RPM, it just seemed happier for sure. <laughs> Yeah, definitely nicer without the uh, air filter on. Have you still got the the old ones from the original? Original. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's huge. It's a big chunk in the mid range there, isn't it? Like where you want it, really. And you could you could feel that bit. It felt like it pulled really well, like out of a corner, but then it would fall off a bit, and it was almost like yeah. encouraging you to short shift. You haven't got that bit down the bottom end there now, that little, little spike. Yeah. But it's kind of pointless being there, really. Because we put those really short trumpets on, didn't we? And that yeah. that was sort of 
it brought that up, didn't it? But it still took that same curve. Yeah. yeah. Rejetted it, and that was the short rams which brought that back up to there. Well, it behaves more like a like you would expect now. How old? Yeah. You start putting them down below five. So this is back at the workshop. There's a couple of little jobs I just need to uh, sort out before this thing's finished off. One of them being that the manifold is fouling on the exhaust, and this is a Manaflow inlet and a Manaflow exhaust. So not sure why they're. Uh, clashing with each other but they are and need a little bit of uh, attention with a grinder um, just re-locking the tabs that hold the chokes in here uh, Neil did experiment with some different size chokes and we ended up back on the 38 mil chokes that it had in it originally and once the three and a half inch manifold was on there the jetting ended up being very similar to where it was previously uh, the only difference I think was the air corrector was uh, dropped down to a 160 I think in the end so yeah the uh, the issue was pretty much just the manifold um, now that the carb is that much closer to the exhaust I decided to make a little heat shield for the bottom of it out of uh, this is just some old heat reflective stuff out of a workshop light so hopefully that will just give it a little bit of protection so this is a close-up of the uh, manifold itself definitely not the best made thing I've ever come across uh, that you can see the weld seam on the inside of there looks like someone sort of gave up halfway through trying to remove that um, so I'm just marking out where it needs a bit of clearance and then this is it cleaned up on the inside it would actually be a quite difficult thing to make because it's a tapered piece of tube with some bends in it so it wouldn't necessarily be a five minute job making that manifold but as you can see here it's not that surface isn't flat where it bolts to the head neither is the other end but I didn't want to take any meat off of the uh, section that bolts to the head because it shares a bolt with the exhaust manifold so if you thin one of those out you'll end up with different clamping force on on each side if you get what i mean so decided just to leave it and hope that the uh the clamping force just pulls it flat didn't seem to be leaking so i didn't want to create a problem that wasn't there this you can see is an issue um the there's a step where the uh, inlet meets the cylinder head so I just uh, scribed some lines across it to try and work out whether it was the same on the other side because you couldn't I couldn't get my head in there to see uh, down the other side um, and by doing this I could just see that the whole manifold actually did need to come across to the left um, a fair bit to get those ports to line up. Right, so this is ready to go back on for the final time. To get this in the right position for the ports to line up, I scribed some lines into the manifold and then onto the back of the head here. And I, I could see then how far I needed to pull this across. So I ground out where the bolts sit here a little bit and I could position this in place, wedge a screwdriver between the exhaust manifold and the inlet manifold to pull it across to the left and then if I look down I had like perfect perfect alignment so what I've done is just 
I've just uh, put a bit of weld on this corner and then filed it into a little wedge shape. So as you push this tight to the head, that wedge pushes against the exhaust manifold and just forces it across. So it's always going to be in the right place and I don't have to worry about wedging a screwdriver in there. So I'm going to take the inlet and the exhaust back off and get them both ceramic coated. But that's another job for another time. I'll hopefully get out and test the car first. manifold so far there's I haven't had to uh, take the plugs out once and it hasn't fouled the plugs so something weird was just going on with that particular inlet length trumpet length um, which was just causing some funny running issues uh, there's a real science to to the inlet length and how an engine is designed around that so I don't know you know, I'm only going on what I've read in a few books. I've got the uh, Lizard's mini book, which a lot of people told me to get. Um, and yeah, so you could have that long inlet manifold could possibly work very well with a different cam and a different compression ratio, or, you know, there's so many variables that you have to have right. And all I know is that now with this three and a half inch one, it runs a lot better, makes better power, better power curve, and it seems to start um, much easier. So that is a win all round, and the car is now ready to take it out and test it, and I feel confident that I can take it out and is actually going to start when I get there. So that is a result. Really happy with that. Thanks to Neil at Slark. If you've got a carbureted mini, race mini, uh, he's the guy to speak to, he builds race engines, tunes them and yeah, he, he sort of figured out the issue with this one pretty quickly. I had actually had a few people mention the inlet manifold, so if you were one of those, well done. The next video of the mini, hopefully we'll be at the racetrack, ripping around, having some fun. Uh, it's been a long, long build, three years this has taken me to finish this car. I don't ever really appreciate what I'm doing until it's done what it has to do, so I'll get the appreciation of it when I actually drive it. I don't really, looking at it and just finishing each bit individually, I don't really get much job satisfaction. Especially when it's something like this where it's built to a set of rules. I, kn I know exactly what it was going to come out like anyway because there's 30, uh, 30 others exactly the same that are all racing. So for me, the, yeah, the job satisfaction will be in the driving. So hopefully that will be next video. That's going to be it for this one. Cheers for watching. See you on the next one.